All right, the sixth item I've got are, um, I tend to call them Belleville spring washers, but any type of a sort of spring washer, which the idea here is you have a, it's hard to tell here, it'll be easier maybe to see in the, um, on the t uh, computer screen, but these have a, let me zoom in, these have a, they're, they're springed, um, they're sloped around the edges, and so what happens is that when you tighten a nut and a bolt between them is they attempt to flatten out, and it creates quite a bit of pressure on them. The one on the left is a traditional, I think it's a traditional Belleville washer, and this one has serrations along both sides, which help it bite into the nut bolt or the material and prevent loosening. Let's take a look at these on uh, McMaster now. So I searched for Belleville spring washers, and here we see disc springs, also called spring washers, carry large loads in small spaces. They maintain tension when force is applied to their surface that can be used to prevent bolt loosening or with bearings to reduce vibration. And so you've got um, quite a few different types here, which is great, one of the reasons I like McMaster. And you can see you can actually stack them to create different types of excuse me, to create different types of loads and deflections. You can stack multiple in the same direction, or you can you can stack multiple in sort of opposing directions, which increases the deflection or the spring stack, if you will. Um, the first one I showed you, the plain one, is uh, just a Belleville disc spring, and the other one I didn't purchase from McMaster, and I, I don't see it here, but um, it's from a company called Reed Supply. Um, so more to read about there, and you can calculate your load ranges and such. Uh, but I like these too. All right, I lied. I actually have nine things, not eight. And here's the seventh of those. This is from a company called Nordlock, and I've uh, just found out about these the past couple of months. So I have a little bit less experience with them than the other products. But it'll be, and it might be easier to show you how these work on the screen. But these are two discs which have a um, sloped teeth in between the two of them. Let me see if I can zoom in. And they are they're just glued together with a dab of um, some type of an epoxy or something. But basically they have this slope here and the key is that the slope is higher than the slope of the thread. So here's how these work. They have serrations on both sides and you can't use them on material or metals which are it's too hard because the the um, serrations need to kind of bite in to prevent the nut from turning but if the nut can't turn because it's biting into the serration if it tries to loosen then what will happen is the two halves will try to loosen but that's not possible because the slope of the angles you see here that I'm twisting is greater than the slope of the thread. So as it tries to twist and it tries to pull, it actually kind of gets tighter. So um, they're quite intriguing. I like them. I haven't had enough experience with them to, to say I can vouch for them, although, as I'll show you in a second, the company has a phenomenal amount of literature um, and examples of how they're used. Uh, my primary concern is, is how reliable is it that the nut and uh, fastener stays um, gripped to these to the uh, serrations here because obviously it's rendered totally useless if the nut itself can just unwind off and not bite into this. So here's the company's website Nordlock and they've got some videos on here, tutorials, examples, lots of information about the different sizes and shapes and materials they come from, why they work, and they also have got a um, let's see if I can find it, a, um, a, let's see here, here we go, um, a, a downloadable PDF magazine called Bolted, which is a, you know, 10 or 15 page, um, you know, little piece of literature they put out about the examples of their products in use and questions that folks ask. So, um, it's an interesting read if you're into this stuff, which I find a little fascinating, and um, I'm also just a big fan of any company which is really making an effort to put out 
um, information like this. So, um, you know, have give these a try, and I'll I'll let you guys know if uh, if I hear more about um, how they're working for me. <clears throat> All right, seven down, two to go. Safety wire. Safety wire is an interesting one. Looks great in principle. Um, has a um, benefit of sort of the visual sh um, sign of it working, but I kind of think it's a big hassle. Um, here's what safety wire is. You need two bolts, or you could do one bolt with a something else to fasten this bolt to. And as, as you can see, the bolts have got a hole drilled through them. You can buy them like this, or you could drill the hole yourself. Frankly, drilling the hole yourself could be a pain. And then what you do, you fasten these two into your into your part, and then you use surprise safety wire, which is a type of uh, type of steel wire that uh, I can't really tell you why it's different than regular type of wire, but you tend to buy safety wire for this. It's not too expensive. And you do a, I wouldn't say it's a complicated, but it's a little confusing at first process of wrapping the wire around one bolt. And then I'll show you sort of this way. What you would do is you'd wrap it around one bolt and then you would come underneath and wrap it around this bolt. It's important you do that uh, because what happens is then if this bolt tried to loosen, which would obviously be a counterclockwise method, when it was loosening, it would be pulling the wire, which would actually cause this bolt to tighten. So if you wired them up the wrong way by just running the wire across the top, when this one loosened, it would let this one loosen. That's why you kind of run it around. I guess you could say it's like an S. Um, I will show a different video on how to put safety wire together. It's a video in and of itself, but what you end up using is these pliers here, which are, um, which can be had for 30 or $40, I think. But basically, you clamp, you clamp your safety wire in here, and then what you do is you pull. Um, it's hard to show without that actually being in action, but when you pull this out, it causes it to twist, which is one of the things that creates the strength. Let me show you the pictures of it. Here are a couple of different examples. I just did a Google search on safety wire. As you can see here, it's wrapped down and around the back side. Um, there's sort of a three-step process, though, in terms of how you first attach it to the bolt. And twist it and then you twist it between the bolt and then you wrap it through the bolt and twist it again you can do it like I said to multiple bolts to a stationary object etc I think this is used in race race car and aviation industries uh, the benefit is it does have a visual reference I think it's frustrating because it's, uh, you can get quick at it but it's you know it requires special bolts the wire the pliers and it can be a little bit of a hassle and if, frankly, if you don't do it correctly and the wire isn't taut, then you don't necessarily have a great uh, hold on it. But chalk that probably more up to, um, you know, operator error than a fail failure of the actual technique. <clears throat> All right, the last one, the infamous Loctite. I think Loctite is a misunderstood product. I think a lot of people assume that there's only blue and there's red and there's not a lot more to it. Uh, I've spent a lot of time with Loctite. I've talked to some folks at the company to try to get some help on how to best use it. And I know enough to know I know nothing. It's incredibly um, complex, not in a bad way, but in a way that shows how much research they've done in the chemistry and engineering um, behind it. Loctite is basically similar to the nylon lock nuts and the sort of jam nuts in that what it's trying to do is it's trying to fill the gaps in between threads that cause the wiggle of them. And by filling that space in, the, lot, the nut is not able to find any area to wiggle and thus is vibration resistant. I have had some frustrating experiences with Loctite, but ultimately do really like it. The obvious downsides are it's not cheap and you've got to apply it correctly. Um, and you've got to choose the right type of Loctite, and it's not the easiest thing to get out sometimes, whereas if you want to remove a jam nut, you can get it off, and then you have to replace it. Um, but just real quick, I wanted to show you some of the types I use regularly. There's a blue type, 242. There's a red, which is 262. Another red, which is 277. Um, another red, which is 2760. And then here's a primer. And here's a can of Loctite cleaner and degreaser. Um, there's not enough time in this video to go over everything, but um, 
one of the things, you, a couple of things you need to know about Loctite is that it, the way it works is by a chemical reaction when the actual Loctite touches the metal. So when you apply it, you want to try to not actually have the um, the bottle tip touch the metal because then you may start a reaction within the bottle. No good, especially when um, one of these is ten to fifteen dollars. Um, I I've heard varied opinions about how much to apply, whether it's just a dab along one side of the threads or whether you want to coat the whole thread or whether you want there to be excess Loctite spilling out that you wipe up. Um, the um, I do know that sometimes Loctite can have a reaction with plastics and such, but I use it on metal, no problem. Um, some of this bigger Loctite, 277 and 2670, it's strong stuff. When you put it on a 3 8 inch bolt and tighten it down properly, I cannot get that bolt undone without applying heat. So it's the real deal. When you reapply Loctite or when you apply it to something which may not be pristine, you may need to clean it. That's going to allow it to work best, which is the degreaser. And when you apply Loctite to something that may not be the correct type of metal, like aluminum, you need to use a proper. The last thing I wanted to show you is if you go to McMaster and you search for Loctite thread lockers, you'll see a quick description which mentions um, some of the ones I had in the basement as well as other types of Loctite. Um, and it helps explain what all the different variants are. But in my opinion, it also raises a lot of questions and can be a bit frustrating to figure out what exactly is the right type. But um, the other resource you can use to help answer that question is if you Google for Loctite white papers. It'll take you to the um, Henkel, who's the owner of Loctite, to website, and they have some very informative and inter interesting white paper PDFs on anaerobic fasteners, how to how they work, and you know why why bolts loosen. An article on keeping threaded fasteners in place, um, and, and much more. So I would I would strongly encourage you to pursue these if you're interested in um, you know, understanding why Loctite works, how to choose which type of thread locker, and so forth. A lot of information here. These, these uh, Loctite folks are, are pretty smart and experienced at what they do. Uh, that's all for now, folks. Enjoy, and I'll see you later.